What's up, what's up everyone? This is Carolise and today we're talking more about your requirements and how to make sure you never miss another requirement again. So I'm gonna talk about this, so stay right there. I will be right back, thank you. requirements today we're talking about how to make sure you don't miss another requirement so everybody's had this experience where you've sat and you've written your acceptance criteria you've written your requirements document and you thought about all the scenarios like you really did put some thinking into this you understood the user's flow you did all of your elicitation you anticipated what the development team might be asking you and you did to the best of your ability your requirements or your acceptance criteria and then it gets into sprint planning and they ask you a bunch of questions you're like i don't even i didn't even think about that like i didn't i don't know like <laughs> you just you just get blown out of the water because that never came up in all of your talking to people that just never didn't come up you didn't think about it you're blindsided or you could have written your requirements document and while they're going with doing your walkthrough of your requirements, they ask you some questions. You're like, oh, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Hmm. So <laughs> it happens to all of us, right? Even the most seasoned business analysts, you're going to miss something. It's inevitable. But, but today, I'm going to share with you some cheats, some cheat sheets some quick tips, some, some ways that you can anticipate more and so you're less likely to miss requirements, okay? This is gonna be my list of um, must think about, like this is my cheat sheet for doing your requirements and I've actually prepared a cheat sheet document which is available on my website. Go to carlys.com, go to templates and then you can download this for free. I don't charge you for nothing. Don't worry, one day it'll change. For now, it's free to take advantage of it. <laughs> so go there, get the free content, and I will list for you all the things that you should be thinking about when you're writing your requirements or your acceptance criteria. So before we get into all the details of what you should be thinking about to make sure you don't miss any requirements, let me just say that I do have a video on eliciting requirements, which is here. I also have a video on um, how to write your business requirements document and that's here. I also have another video on writing your acceptance criteria and that one comes with examples. The other one comes with a template. So you can get resources to go with the video. So I'm explaining it to you and I'm giving you a start. I'm giving you how to do it for yourself. So you can get that video here. Watch those videos to give you some background and then this video will make more sense to you. So when you're writing your requirements document or your acceptance criteria, um, the first thing you probably should be thinking about before you even get to that stage is you need to make sure you're writing for, you know, an enhancement. And it really is an enhancement, not a bug, because sometimes people report things and it's really a bug. And the thinking that goes into a bug is really quick, like just fix this thing. But Sometimes in fixing that one thing, you uncover more problems and then it becomes a requirement. So just to make sure that you're doing the right analysis that's required. So just think about that to make sure this is not just a bug fix. It's more of a bigger problem that we should be solving. Also to name your requirements well, name your um, stories well as you're doing it. These are just some auxiliary things I talk about in those other videos, but I wanted to bring those to the fore here as well. So once you've done that, you've named it well, you know it's an enhancement, um, then you get into actually the details. And we know the devil is in the details, right? So <laughs> one of the things that you should be aware of is your defaults. People always miss the defaults. They always forget about default behavior. You always wanna help your user if this is um, 
a system that end users are going to use or even if it's like admin users you still want the defaults to make sense so that you don't have to start from scratch every time so think about your defaults should it be defaulting to a particular value is this the most common case is what you should be defaulting to and also remember that some people don't like default some people want you what the end users to be thinking about things and not having the system just populate things for them so look at defaults in two ways whether it's something that you should be helping the user with by defaulting or are you hindering the user by defaulting so be very careful about that and what's the common thing right is it more likely that they'll want to get this value all the time in that case it should be a default or not also think about sorting so this is something else we always forget when write our requirements when you have, for example, a table with a number of different fields and all kinds of stuff going on, shouldn't you be you know, sorting that in some kind of order, right? Think about how you, when you put yourself in the place of the user, what would you most likely want to see first? And that should be kind of your sort order. So think about sort, think about defaults, um, think about errors. Right, so if this thing doesn't go well and it goes south and there isn't data or there's a problem, how is the error handling happening? Is it just gonna be, you know, a red boxer on the field? Is it just gonna be an error message to say this field is required? Or do you need to take them through an entire flow? Hey, we saw that you did this, but in order for you to complete the section, you need to also do this section or something. You need to navigate them away to that. So think about how the errors are supposed to be handled and a lot of times these are things that we forget because you know we're so focused on the main flow that we forget about what happens if there's a problem. The other thing to, to think about is large data sets. How does your acceptance criteria or requirements handle when there's a lot of data? Like sometimes I would show things in a certain way if it's not much data but if it's a lot I would show it in a different way. How do you handle that? And how do you handle if there's no data? Sometimes when there's an empty data set, that can cause problems too. So how does your, your acceptance criteria, how does your requirement handle when there is no data to show, right? How does, how does it load? How does it visualize? Like what, what is the impact? If there's no impact, fine, but think through these things. This is what I'm telling you. Like there are things that you need to think through even before you get into sprint planning or even before you do your part, you know, your requirements walk through to make sure you're not missing anything, right? To make sure you get all of it. The other thing that you should be thinking about is like your integrations. So sometimes some of the systems that you're working on are not going to live by themselves. They're not in an isolated box where they only exist in their own world. A lot of the systems are now integrated with APIs, with, you know, embedded in other systems and stuff like that. So if you're embedded, for example, in Salesforce, or your banking system that talks from the application to the legacy core banking system and things like that, how does that affect your requirements? How does the integration affect what you're writing? How does it make, how, how do you make sense of the data that needs to be pushed to one system and pulled from another system? Have you considered that, right? So making sure that you keep the integration pieces together is something that we sometimes we forget, right? But we should keep in mind when we're writing our requirements. The other thing that we should keep in mind is the auxiliary functions. So yeah, we're changing something on the main system, right? And that's great, it looks great, we've covered everything. But how does that affect when we need to export, when we need to do a report, when we need to you know, export the data to some other place? Like these are functions that could happen I call them auxiliary functions, they're not the main thing, but they do affect it. And have you considered that? Have you considered the data that, needs to, that has been added over here to push that into your reporting system? Auxiliary functions could include your exports, your reporting, your change log, audit log, things like that, right? So those are the other things that are affected by what you're changing or you're improving on that you need to keep in mind. So making sure you cover all of those um, almost like edge functions, making sure that happens is also very, very important as well. So there you have it guys, just a quick video trying to help you to not miss another requirement 
And as I said, you need to remember the defaults, you need to remember the auxiliary functions, you need to remember the error handling, um, you need to remember your integration points. Um, I probably said a bunch more, but those are the main things that you should be remembering when you're writing your requirements so you don't miss out on things. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and check out the website to get the free cheat sheet on the topic I discussed today. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video. Take care.